is Coda, which dropped on Apple Plus. Um, were you looking forward to Coda? I was looking forward to Coda once the news dropped at a Sundance 2021 that Coda broke the uh, acquisition uh, record, $25 million buy for Apple TV Plus, breaking the record set just last year with Hulu and Palm Springs. So when you see something like that, and it was like a $7 million difference, it was quite the margin of record breaking. You know, it's like, oh, wow, people really like Coda. And it did win the uh, uh, Dramatic Jury and Audience uh, Awards at Sundance 2021. So there was a, a really warm reception to it earlier this year. So, uh, yeah, with that, I, I was looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, coming out in August, a little bit before award season, perhaps a little curious on Apple's part because they clearly – drop the bag on this with awards play in mind but either way was looking forward to it and i uh i did enjoy it what did you think yeah i thought this movie was great um i was surprised at how emotional this movie made me and i think it worked it it, it surprised me because i think after like watching the first like 25 or 30 minutes i was like oh this is okay like I don't really know if I'm going to get there with this movie. And then by the end, I was totally in and totally captivated and rooting for uh, Ruby to, you know, uh, follow her dreams. Uh, I, f- I really felt for her situation and for her family situation. And I, I think they tell so many aspects of the story so expertly. It's just really impressive. Like at first, I didn't think I was going to really buy into the family dynamic. You know, I was kind of, I was kind of like, man, this really sucks. It seems like they're really using Ruby in a lot of ways, and they, and they are. You know, it's like a codependent relationship in a lot of ways. Um, but I think it's the scene where, you know, they, they catch the parents having sex, right? Miles comes over, and they're gonna practice the duet, and they catch the parents having sex, and then the way that the, the dad and the mom respond and make them talk about it, and after that, I just was like totally in because I was like laughing. I love the dynamic of the family. It felt like such a real, like awkward family moment. And I was like, okay, mm-hmm. now I'm, now I'm getting more and more of it. And as the stakes raise, as Ruby's put into this impossible situation of chasing her own dreams or fulfilling her family's expectations of her, it just really, really all worked for me. And the music choices were just fantastic. So I was just really, really blown away. Well, what aspects of the movie did you like? You said you enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, so kind of it's kind of similarly like Coda almost the whole time it, it it's a little hokey, it's a little cheesy, right? It, and it has like familiar aspects, right? It's like the coming of age story really central on the family. But of course the key thing here is the specifics, right? What does Coda mean? Child of deaf adults. And you know, we just talked about uh deaf representation, deaf stories. Uh, in media just last year with Sound of Metal, which Great got movie. many plaudits, including Best Picture, Best Actor nominations. And, you know, Sound of Metal, the lead performance, the main focus of the movie, is still Riz Ahmed's character, a hearing person, and the character that's becoming deaf. But Paul Racy, no- notably, you know, got that supporting actor nomination and a lot of love. And he, of course, was a co- is a coda himself. But all the other deaf actors are largely in the periphery because it was a Riz, a Riz story. But in this, 75% of the lead actors are deaf performers. Yeah. And, I mean, no- notably, you have uh, Marley Mar- Maitland, who plays Jackie, the oh, mom. Maitland, you're right. The uh, only deaf winner of a acting Oscar in 1986, Best Actress. And I think you're right. Like, even though Amelia Jones... Is, is not deaf and her character isn't deaf, but like the, the family just felt so real and the dynamics are so strong. And because they kept bringing everything back around to the story, focusing on everything with the family, I think that's what makes it work by the end. I, like, like you, I, I'm very similar to you where it's like, I wasn't like being super moved throughout most of it. But once we get to like that performance that Ruby gives with her school chorus yeah. and like her parents and her brother are, 
taking it all in even though they can't actually hear the music like that i think that set piece is like really really great yeah and, and moving and then it goes from there of course when we go to the audition and stuff and they send her off and all that so yeah, it has a nice crescendo <laughs> yeah. music term there in terms of how it builds uh, for for the viewer yeah for sure and you know i agree i think that that uh school co- uh performance scene coupled with the next scene where the dad asks her to sing what and he like feels her vocal cords and feels the vibrations and um you know kind of learning to try to understand this language that he just has he's never going to be able to fully comprehend and kind of vice versa for her it's uh it's really moving and then obviously i think the the berkeley performance where she's also signing both sides now the joni mitchell classic to her family while she does it it's just like absolute knockout home run um you know, uh, closing or final scene, uh, just really, really impressive for the way that they did it. And I, I thought Amelia, Amelia Jones, uh, was mm-hmm. really, really, uh, great in this. I, I didn't really love, um, Ferdia Walsh Pilo as Miles, uh, something about him just didn't his, or his performance didn't totally hit for me, but I thought Amelia was great. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't too familiar with her. She's, uh, in the ensemble of, the Netflix show Lock and Key, which is like a comic adaptation, but she was just cast in a New Yorker story adaptation to star alongside Nicholas Braun. So mm. perhaps Amelia Jones would quickly become in hot demand. She is only 19. But yeah, she's really good. I mean, she has to carry the whole film, you know? Yeah. Especially because the other her her main co-stars uh don't don't speak. So really she carries most of the lines. Yeah, just uh, if you have Apple Plus and, you know, you, I think you want to take in a movie that I think pays a lot of respect to a community that seems to be getting more, becoming more visible, especially in media, definitely uh, worth your time. And it, it hits emotionally by the end. So you'll, you'll get your money's worth mm-hmm. for it. Yeah, and just looking into it, this is actually a remake of a 2014 French film, La Famille Belliere, but notably, the parents in that were not uh, deaf. So Coda seems to be the uh, positive redux in that regard. So curious to see how this movie is received moving forward, whether it becomes an awards uh, thing when Apple does a campaign in the fall, because they obviously would like it too. And I think, I think it would be just no question. It's a heartwarming movie. I feel like more people see it, the more people will talk about it because it's like one of those uplifting movies. Yeah, I agree. I've been telling a lot of people to watch if they have Apple Plus. So uh, definitely, definitely uh, worth the time.